if you have a, an area of peatland and you're thinking of restoring it, then I would say do it. There is, at the moment, 100% grant funding for this work. You'd be daft not to do it, in my view. You're saving the planet, essentially, as well, so you're proud of it, like. It is the right thing to do for peatland. It's free funding, so there's, there's no catch. You've got absolutely nothing to lose. Scotland's peatlands cover 20% of the country's land area and are an essential part of the natural environment. Peatlands play a hugely important role in the water cycle. They hold water in the uplands and gradually let it flow into the lowlands. Peatlands support a wide range of wildlife and plants, which is vital to Scotland's biodiversity. Peat is the largest and most efficient land-based store of carbon capable of storing an average 10 times more carbon per hectare than any other land-based ecosystem. Unfortunately in Scotland, approximately 80% of our peatlands are damaged. So instead of being a carbon store and a habitat that sequesters carbon, it's actually one that's emitting carbon. We estimate that approximately 20% of Scotland's annual carbon emissions are coming from damaged peatlands. But peatland restoration is one of the most effective ways of locking carbon in offering a clear, nature-based solution to the climate crisis and biodiversity loss. Nature Scots Peatland Action offers funding for suitable peatland restoration projects across Scotland. The Scottish Government's targets for peatland restoration in Scotland are 250,000 hectares by the year 2030. This target started in 2020 when the Scottish Government made a commitment of £250 million to support the delivery of peatland restoration. Peatland Action has been restoring Scotland's degraded peatlands since 2012. But more effort is needed in the coming years to tackle the climate emergency and biodiversity loss. In this film, we are going to look at three areas of land across Scotland which have all benefited from substantial peatland restoration work through Peatland Action funding and show you how you can apply to receive up to 100% funding to carry out this vital work and help meet Scotland's pledge of net zero emissions by 2045. I'm Martin Andrews, I'm the factor for Weems and March Estate, which is a 45,000 acre estate. And here we are hill farming and um, we have a, a grouse moor. We have about 12,000 acres of peat bog on the estate here and we've so far restored 550 hectares of that. Much of the peat bog that we have is actually in quite good condition, so not all of it needs restoration. The aspirations for the estate is to have all of our peatland in good condition and thereafter manage it in good condition. So that's the challenge and that's what we're hoping to do. So we started work on this site in um, October 2022 uh, and due to finish January 23. It can be several months of work and um, we also do you know phased projects over several years so landowners can apply to have funding done over multiple funding years so it just depends on the on the scale of the site and the scale of the, the damage I suppose that needs to be re repaired. Well, the techniques that the contractors have been using here have been to reprofile exposed peat hags. So just taking off steep slopes, making the angles more gentle, re-turfing them, blocking hill drains with peat dams to hold water. That's been the main thrust of it. We look at being able to restore a peat bog from within the bog. So here, virtually all the features have been restored by just using a digger and turfs. The carbon cost of that is minimal and the restoration of it is generally outstanding. The way we can we can help landowners are to, um, throughout the whole the whole peatland restoration process really so um, we can start with the initial peat depth and peat condition surveys and um, hydrological surveys as well um, supporting them with funding applications lining up contractors to do the work and also help them throughout the, the delivery of works on the ground as well. The issues for an estate like ours in terms of the project is managing the cash flow because you pay the contractors up front and then reclaim the grant thereafter. 
Fortunately, the, the grant flow from Nature Scott is very quick and therefore the, the cash management issue is not a major problem, but it's something you've got to factor in. If we're going to start hitting the targets that you know, the Scottish Government have got, we're going to have to roll out more restoration, but you've got to keep the quality and so that you know, we've got to be improving that quality and improving our techniques going forward to be able to meet the challenges that we're going to get with climate change. It is a job where it is, you, know, you get a lot out of it. It's a good feeling when you're doing it and you know, you're, saving, you're saving the planet essentially as well, so you're proud of it like, yeah. Turning this X forest into a bog, it really was about turning it back to what it had been. We weren't uh, doing anything new with it. It had been a bog, it had been grazing land, it had been a forest. It hadn't been very successful at any of these other ventures. So turning it into a functioning bog was the logical thing to do. The land had roughly about 15 years regen of a lot of Sitka spruce, a lot of birch. Very overgrown, quite impenetrable, basically just a mess. Forest to bog projects generally are, are challenging in the sense that you've got a huge amount of material to move off the site to start with. So if you have a mature forest, then you've got to fell all that timber, take it away. And what you're left with is all the stumps from the trees that have been removed. And you have to decide, well, what are we going to do with these? The diggers dig a hole, pull the tree over into the hole, then fill over the top of it and run back and forward over the top of it. So there's more steps to get to the final result than there would be in more simple drain blocking or hag profiling. It started in October 2016 and it went on four months through the winter and over the next three winters and finishing in March 2020. Roughly 20 hectares in each phase. Since the work's been carried out, the bog is now beginning to function better again. We're seeing sphagnum growing in places where it wasn't before. We're seeing a lot of pooling and water being held on the site. And that sphagnum, as it grows, will get stored in the ground as carbon in the longer term. We will also begin to see new species come back into this area. So benefits for biodiversity leading from this. In respect to the logistics of doing the work and the finances, it really worked like clockwork. We got stage payments from Nature Scott. The contractors invoiced us in regular intervals, so it really worked um, very smoothly. Doing this peatland restoration on the Mossy Cree has become important to me as it becomes a sort of legacy for the future. On the, the board, on the way in, it says 10,000 years in the making. So the time that I'm here involved in this, it's just the blink of an eye. We feel we should do the right thing for mankind, for nature, in, in what we, we do in, under our stewardship of this area. We think the work of Moss of Cree has been really successful. It's a great demonstration site for all our other forestry bog schemes going forward. So we're learning more from this as we go ahead and we're bringing people to this site to show them how to do it. Loch Rosk is very close to where I'm based in Kinloch U. And this was one of the first estates that did work when I started working with Peeland Action in 2017. I work with Angus Davidson Limited, which is the agent responsible for the peatland action work on behalf of the estate. We've been working since the very beginning, about five, six years now, with uh, the estate here. It's very much a close collaboration between what we do and working with the peatland officer. We have the same goals, we want the same outcomes, and we want to see the same results. The land has generally been used over the years for deer stalking, a lot of sheep over the years, some cattle as well. Sometimes uh, they, they went away, but we've started taking the cattle back on the last uh, few years as well. On Loch Rosk Estate to date, we have restored around about a thousand hectares. And that should, over the next hundred years, give a saving of around about 230,000 tonnes of carbon being released into the atmosphere. Most of these sites sit about 1,500 feet high in Blanca bog habitats, quite heavily degraded uh, in general. 
and required you know, a substantial amount of work to complete them. Before we started the works, the badly eroded areas of peat were getting washed into the water supply and obviously down and, in and beyond that and into the river systems and loch systems. However, by doing this work, the amount of waterborne peat has been greatly reduced and that's uh, obviously beneficial to everybody. So if we're looking at financial gain from, from peatland restoration, this is a fully funded project, so the real value comes not in so much as in, in terms of almost the project itself, it's the byproducts. So for example, in Macroska State there are um, some hydro schemes, but we sort of heard anecdotally from the estate that it helps with the water being stored for the hydro scheme over time. The first phase, we, we seen that it did slow down the, the water, so our hydro scheme worked better. We've seen up to 15% increase in, in output in the hydros. The bird life has come back, you, you go up and you see the workings of it all, all very positive on our side. Water vole, for example, is a species under threat in Scotland right now. By reinvesting in these habitats, it opens up habitats to water voles that perhaps didn't exist in the way that they do now. As a local contractor, it's allowed me to expand my business, but also give really good training opportunities to younger people in the area, because they are the future. In these rural areas, you start to put these benefits out, then it, it makes a, a, it's a real tangible difference in the highlands. My advice to other landowners would be just get in touch with the Nature Scott um, Peatland Action Team. It's free funding, so there's, there's no catch. You've got absolutely nothing to lose. If you are a landowner interested in applying for funding for peatland restoration work, we now offer a rolling programme where applications can be submitted at any time of the year. Where appropriate, we make multi-year offers for large-scale projects. We also encourage applications from contractors who wish to be added to the contractor list. My advice to landowners who are looking at peatland restoration is that you either speak to the peatland action team, there's a huge amount of experience in there, or that you speak to a recognised agent who understands peatland restoration and if they can't do it themselves then they can point in the direction of uh, a company that can. If other landowners were asking me what I, I thought of peatland action and would I recommend it, I definitely would recommend it. If you have a, an area of peatland and, and you're thinking of restoring it, then I would say do it. It's all positive from, from that perspective. The fact that the government are very supportive and there is at the moment 100% grant funding for this work, you'd be daft not to do it in my view. We've set up a workforce development and planning team who are delivering a series of training opportunities around Scotland as we speak. These are aimed at supporting project designers, contractors, project managers, landowners and those actually driving excavators on sites. So Peatland and Restoration is not only restoring sites but it's creating green jobs and supporting local economies.